Doug Childs, Warriors and Wild Man with my buddy, my amigo. I'm talking about the rich man. What's up, Doug? What's up, peoples out there? Hey, uh, Rich, uh, I've got this 36-inch uh, Louisville Slugger with uh, nails that have been pounded through the fat end of it that I'm about to take to the skull of some little tinker pots. Isn't this going to be fun? This is a great time. Hey, uh, you know, we talked about in our last uh, podcast that uh, if if you've got a male, especially he's in his 20s, we'll give him that much, you know. I think it should, like you and I were doing, we're, before we were even teens, we were working. All yep. through the, our teens we were, especially in the summers. Uh, however... Uh, as, as we talked about last week, is that if uh, somebody's not a provider, then according to this thing called the Bible, and uh, sweet baby Jesus, seven pounds, 13 ounces, and uh, uh, Santo Pablo, he said in First Timothy 5, says if you don't provide for your own, he said you've denied the faith and you're worse than an unbeliever. Here's another one that I want to tattoo onto your little poor, fragile brain today with you, my friend Rich. You, you believe in tattoos? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Uh, the, I believe the little guy, right? That was yeah. in uh, Love Boat. Nobody remembers you know, that. Airplane. Uh, here's another thing that I want to uh, tattoo onto the, the, the timid little titmouse that's listening today. Not only are you not uh, a male in the true classic sense of the word, if you don't provide for your family, if you don't protect them, I don't think you're a dude either. Boom. Isn't that the man's job? Boom. Absolutely. Back in the caveman days, uh, Rich, if some cave bastard from some other tribe tried to steal a man's brontosaurus ribs or the wheel he just invented or his hot Raquel Welch-like cave woman, or they tried to harm his snaggletooth cave brood, the man under attack would find like the nearest pterodactyl bone and uh, commence to beat the living crap out of said thievenous cave thug and i'm talking about <laughs> he would beat the moron to death like in splat and if he didn't kill the cave thug he probably would have definitely left one of those massive um cartoon size like lumps on his head yeah right yeah good one that's how we rolled that's that was a, that's in our dna that's our our primal funk but but that's required yeah but it seems like it's missing though man from uh the constituent junk of uh the the squealy 21st century hipster especially the liberals yeah i can't handle that kind of stuff uh, a woman should be protected and and your and your children of course but a woman should be protected your children should be protected not just physically but you need to protect their honor that's it, your job you're a man that it, that's your job in every form and fashion all day, every day. Now, uh, what what I just rattled off for for those uh, those those tender charges that are listening to Warriors and Wild Men podcast, and oh, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, the aforementioned was what was considered rich uh, normal for a dude up until the 1960s, when the man haters began their systematic emasculation of the male collective, trying to eradicate any and all semblance of that primal stuff. Yeah, well, there's a couple things in that. One, I think in our culture, men stopped, started identifying with women. So we started effeminizing the men. As soon as that happened, then it wasn't their job anymore. And then why should I risk myself to protect you? I mean, we're the same. We're all the yeah, same. You and, you and I both would, uh, uh, you know, I wrote a whole book about it. You espouse it uh, in, in your life messages. Um, we're not telling or teaching girls and letting uh, women think that there'd be these, oh, Beauregard, you know, damsels in distress where they, they need a man. Because especially in this milieu, if you're looking for a dude to protect you, <laughs> you might as well look to Michael Jackson for like psychoanalysis or something. It's not going to happen. And uh, both my daughters, uh, first uh, Helio Gracie, jiu-jitsu black belts in the world. I knew that I couldn't be omnipresent. Even though I think I, I'm God, you know, I'm not. And I finally figured that out. I can't be everywhere at all times to protect them. So I, I wanted them to rock in a hard place. So I made sure that they trained with the greatest fighters in the world. Yeah, that's good stuff. Everybody needs to be able to protect themselves. But the but the primary responsibility for protection yeah. is the man. That's your job. Freaking and people buck say, stops here, man. Um, I don't want to impress anybody and make anybody think that I'm educated. But when Do I was it. taking a class, it was called introduction to cultural anthropology and that sounds awesome it wasn't awesome but one of the things in the class they Those were saying big old words in there, yeah man, like ten dollar ones yeah they were saying things like you know women and men they're the same and all this and 
they were talking about women in combat. And I said, excuse me, women and men are not the same. Right. I said, women have a higher, uh, in a normal healthy female, has a higher percentage of body, body fat, but that's based on specialized fatty tissues that are designed for child rearing. And a woman in the class that was a lesbian and was mad and obviously took offense to that. And the fact that I had another semester class with her. And, was she uh, a good-looking lesbian? No, or? no. Oh, okay. Typical. And uh, Look like Chris Farley? No, she's or maybe like, um, skinny and tall and mad. Or maybe like Meatloaf in uh, Fight Club. No, she was a, she was a lesbian because kids, she hated men, and, short hair and I represent that very well. So she wears stretch pants. No golf shirt. No, right, but short ahead. spiky hair. Gotcha. So she says, "You know what? I have three friends that are just as tough as any guy." Blah blah blah. Really? And I said, "Awesome." Well, I'll tell you <laughs> what: bring your three friends and yourself, and next week I'll be bring five sets of boxing gloves to class, and I got a hundred bucks that says I can knock all of you out. All the football players, which were in the class for who knows why, started cheering. And she looks at me and yells at me and made a very valid point. She said, I'm talking about a normal person. You're not normal. That's the problem. Back in the day, women would never challenge men to a fight. Right. Say that they were, who does that? First of all, I'm not going to hit a girl in the first Bro, I've place. Got the, but what the heck are they talking about? I've got about? the greatest uh, chick fighting dude story, man. Check this out. I think it was, uh, I think it was eighth grade. And there was this uh, there was this girl in my school named Dina, and uh, uh, I think she hails from a French background. Ran hot, beautiful olive skin, good looking girl, kind of stout, you know, not a strudel hun, but you know she wasn't you know some frail daisy. She, <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, she had an attitude, man. And I remember one time, and you know, I was a classic smartass and stuff, so I said something uh, kind of cheeky to her. And she goes, I'll kick your ass after school. It's like, you can't kick my ass. She goes, I'll kick your ass after school. And I was like, oh, my <laughs> God. Because I knew right then. Now, I wasn't into Taekwondo back then. I was a little skinny runt. Looked like one of those uh, hairless, uh, what are those uh, kind of chihuahua dogs kind of from China or something. <laughs> yeah. That was me. And uh, I knew that Dina could kick my ass. I don't care what kind of seven <laughs> types of smoke I threw. I knew that she's going to do it. So check it out. I'm like, Ew, I got to, you know, divert, divert, divert. Uh, and so uh, this dude named Todd uh, uh, walked into this conversation. I said, I bet you can't beat Todd's ass. She goes, I'll kick Todd's ass any day, every day. And Todd says, you can't kick my ass. And they're like, I'll be seeing y'all later. <laughs> <laughs> so check it out, man. It got crazy. Everybody, uh, word spread like wildfire. It's like, you know, in the alley, after school. And it was one of those um, uh, uh kind of like late fall, winter afternoon when the sun's starting to set, you know, a little sooner than normal. So the sun's kind of, you know, it's, uh, it's diving in the background. Set a pretty scene for an alley fight. And um, <laughs> so everybody's there, probably about 50 people. Dina's there, and, you know, she's ready to rumble. Todd's standing there, and he's, he's, got, he's kind of tall and lanky, and he had like white hair, not uh, almost albino, kind of Edgar Winter, Johnny Winter type look to him. And I'll never forget it, man. Uh, she ran right at him, yanked his pants down, just whoosh, <laughs> blue jeans, just pulled them down like to, uh, to where they got caught, like, you know, uh, behind his knees. He's got his little tidy whities on, man. You can, you can see the outline of his junk and all this stuff, and he's trying to pull his pants up, and everybody's like, <laughs> ah! we're screaming, laughing. And while he's trying to pull his pants up, she, with two fists, man, gets two fists, monkey fist, and starts grabbing his, his stringy, straw-like hair and be commenced to scalping him. She was throwing <laughs> hair up in the air. And you could see the reason I mentioned the sun because of the way the angle it was cocked and had that kind of golden, you know, kind of uh, great light for taking yeah, pictures. Yeah, the golden hour of photography. Man, you could see the hair floating everywhere. Hairs, he's still trying to pull up his pants. She's shredding his blonde hair. And I was sitting there back thinking, that could have been me. <laughs> <laughs> so some, some girls, uh, yeah, they might not need uh, a dude. And they might be able to kick a normal guy's uh, backside. But going back to the whole aspect of uh, women in combat, and, and oh, my God, I'm going to take some heat on this one. You try to pull a guy who weighs 225 pounds with a 75-pound rucksack on his back out of a burning tank. You give me a 130-pound girl or 150 or 170-pound chick and try to do that kind of uh, extraction. It's not going to happen. 
So anyway, the guy, uh, the man, um, uh, <laughs> men should have this protective prowess. Yeah. We should not curl up in the fetal position. Uh, it's not how we rolled back in the day and uh, hide behind like some scared caveman behind a stalagmite and suck our thumbs and wet our hamster loincloths. Uh, we should be the ones who kick butt and take names. And matter of fact, back in the day, man, since we're talking caveman stuff, if you didn't act like that and you didn't have that ability, that protective uh, prowess, yep. you weren't given uh, the right to propagate. You couldn't, you couldn't have sex. You, yeah, who, you who wants to reproduce woman. that? Right. And it just uh, naturally selected you out of the equation. Uh, and here's another thing. is a primal man back in the day, and it's not just caveman stuff. I mean, uh, Rich, this is um, up until the, the early 1900s, if you live in remote places. Uh, if you're a dude, you can't rely on uh, police departments. No. The caveman didn't. There wasn't a cave police department. No. Wasn't a cave National Guard. Wasn't Brink's cave security systems coming to your rescue. Well, here, here's an article. Because here, what we're talking about, we are talking about physically, um, emotionally, the honor of your family, protecting your family. But we're talking about a mentality or a mindset of being the leader of your family, which means I'm responsible for this, right? And so with that mindset, you know, a lot of people... They, they've given up the leadership of their family. They gave up the role. They give up their responsibility to provide for their family. They give up the responsibility to lead their family. Then they're going to give up the responsibility to protect their family. And they say, hey, we're all the same. And then it's not getting done or it's not getting done effectively. It doesn't even matter if you're good at it. If you're a little skinny guy and you can't fight and you can't this and you can't that, then you better get proficient in weapons. You you need to figure out what you need to do to protect right. your family. I'm not talking about offense going out get the you know, being equalizer. a psycho. I'm talking about you know taking care of your family at your house. But there's a, an article that I... I I lifted off this uh, w this website, this news site called ClashDaily.com. Yeah, I've heard of it. And you've heard of that. I, th I think you have. And it's I Eight heard, Lessons I heard in Manhood. The, I heard the, um, uh, the editor-in-chief is a, a very smart, dashing he's young a, man. He's a beautiful, beautiful human being. One of my <laughs> best friends in the whole entire world. I can see him from where I'm sitting. And uh, this article is called Eight Lessons in Manhood from, from the Vikings. And I like, since we're talking about a mindset, it really is a mindset. We talk about the first point except death with open arms that right there that you want to draw the line in the sand all right the men on this side all, all the wusses get on over there except death with open arms it's it's not only going to happen to everybody but i'm not going to live my life fearing death you have to step over that line right. and other people's life they your family's lives have to matter more than your life if it doesn't then then you can't even you're not going to step up to the plate well here's here's a good example rich uh virginia tech um what year was it? I think 2007. Cho Sung Wee, freaking full nutter dude who's angry at George W. Bush. Uh, he gets what, a 22 and like a nine millimeter, and, and he decides, you know, he's going to light up a couple of classrooms. Uh, he killed 32, I believe, uh, teachers, or I'm sorry, students and, uh, and faculty. Crazy. And check this out those students uh, hid under their desk. Now, a real man, and I know everybody's like, well, you, you'd have no idea what you'd do. I kind of do. Rich, if you and I were in, uh, say, both of us went to ASU or Texas Tech, you know, my alma mater, and, um, and all of a sudden we're hearing, bam, bam, bam. I would know immediately because I'm a freaking redneck. I grew up with guns. You hear I a gun, you know. Yeah, I'm not thinking, oh, they're doing fireworks out there. Cinco de Mayo. In the, in the breezeway. It's like, okay, that's a gun. And it sounds like it's getting closer. Okay? Uh, if it was going farther away, I'd still go and investigate it. But say, uh, you know, it sounds like it's getting closer. Bro, I'm telling you right now, man, I take this MacBook uh, Pro and uh, that thing would turn into like the uh, a, like a James Bond weapon. Yep. Like remember the hat with that big you know Asian guy go <laughs> crick his neck and then he'd throw it and cut heads off and shit. Yeah, the flying that's guillotine. What, that's what would happen with this MacBook Pro. Or I would take uh, a desk and when uh, you know some dipstick coming in, you, you know I kill everybody because nobody like me. And uh, he pops his uh, his his gun hand in or his head. Guess who's gonna have a wooden door? sever you know <laughs> that's right that hands and then you know look you might get killed i might get killed but you know what 32 freaking people aren't gonna die that's right we're gonna beat his ass he's gonna die something bad might happen to us 
It's true that uh, all men live, but not, uh, or what's it, true that all men die, but not all men live? That's right. Sometimes it's well, good to take one for the team. We see what happened on the train in, in oh, but, France. By the, by the way, the only person that put up any kind of resistance, period, in the Virginia Tech stuff, 76-year-old Holocaust survivor who, uh, who, Come on. who blocked the door, uh, he died, and uh, blocked the door as the students were uh, bailing out of the second story window. All the other guys, there had to be some dudes there. There had to be some there sports be. guys. A couple football players, a couple basketball brothers, something like they that. Ran. Nobody did anything. They got into the desk and the guy went row by row. Bam, 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 reload. Bam, 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 That's reload. That's ridiculous. Bam. Who stands for that? It's a culture thing that we've taught people to be victims. We've taught them to be pussies. We've taught them to just lay there and take it. And folks, that's uncategoric. I uh, can't scrape it off my shoe. Horse shit. Yep. Well, think, look at the guy in, in France when he was on the train and the guy whips out the gun. And what does he do? He runs over there and takes him out and he gets shot right. in the process. But when they asked him about it, did you hear what he said on the interview? He's like, I'm not going to sit here and die. Right. <laughs> they were like, well, did you think you could die? Right. Yeah, but I'm not going to sit here and yeah. do it. Here's my thing. If that stuff goes down and you have a chance to die. You need to accept the, the fact that death right. is a possibility. Here it is. And then the next thing is, well, how do I want to die? I'm going to tell you what. <sighs> I, I got this weird survival instinct in me. Right. I, I got this thing called try. I got a whole bunch of try. That's right. I'm going to try to live. I'm going to try to win. I'm going to try to get them. I ain't going to duck under no desk. It's time to get it on. And we need to raise young men up to be men and these men to get their heads out of their butts and start realizing, hey, man, you need to be a man. You need to survive. You need to be a champion. You need to be a warrior. Yeah. Like, let's get it on. And that's why, uh, you know, I'm a huge advocate is uh, as soon as the kid uh, that you have under your charge uh, becomes ambulatory, uh, get them into martial arts. Yeah. As soon as they uh, got a lick of sense about them, get them into weapons training. I'm talking about like when Hannah and Regis were like, I don't know, uh, eight and ten for Christmas. Like, Daddy, what is, you, you know, what am I going to get for Christmas? Like, well, little children, my precious little darlings, I've got you throwing knives and a silhouette <laughs> cutout. There it is. And so we get on, on the, the landing of our third uh, story, beautiful townhome in Miami, put the put the, uh, the the board, the silhouette, you know, of the bad guy down yeah. on one end of the hall. And there Regis and Hannah are just flipping knives, man, sticking in the forehead, yes. sticking in the chest. Yeah, come jack with us. My, my son was really small. All, all my kids, I taught them to shoot. But when my youngest son, Luke, he was about eight or nine, and we were out shooting pistols, and I put a small Glock in his hand, and, man, he started shooting that thing. He started lighting that thing up, and he goes, oh, yeah. man, this is fun. He loves it. He shooting, shoot. guns, shooting guns to me is like uh, uh, orgasm and sex. <laughs> Nobody ever – I've never uh, done it and said, ew. I don't like that. It's always a good thing. <laughs> right. Yeah, so check It never this out. disappoints, folks. So I was talking to my daughter, who's 22, and 22 years old. I was talking to her, and I said, hey, you know, you're probably going to need to think about carrying a gun. You need to think about what's going on. She goes, oh, no, I went down. I got the class. I did the thing. I got the deal, and yeah. I got a gun. I said, where's your gun? She pulled out a Glock 43, same pistol that I have, pulls it right out of her purse. Bam, there it is. Boom. I mean, you know, we got to right. be ready to go. You don't know. Yeah. And that's, uh, and we're talking girls and they're down with it. But again, you know, guys are just like, uh, they're little reticent stuff. I'm against stuff. violence. Uh, I hate, I hate Jesus it when it goes. was it violent? <laughs> Except for when he told Peter, grab a couple swords. Right. And those weren't, uh, it wasn't like, you know, some decorative uh, swords you get off uh, QVC or something. Like the ones right here. In exactly. Office. Not some like <laughs> some fake claymore from Pakistan. I mean, this <laughs> this this thing was, uh, and you know, a lot a lot of people said, you know, Peter, you know, he cut the guy's ear off. And if you, if you ever seen like the the old kind of uh, Renaissance depictions of of Peter taking that cat's ear off, it always shows him kind of like with a a dainty little yeah, a little knife, you know, or like a chopstick. He's just gonna like put some wasabi it's, on it. It's 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 it's. You know, it's at best a, a, a steak knife, okay? It's not one of the big uh, Foga de Chao type, you know, swords that they bring out, big chunks of meat. Tiny little knife, and there's Peter on the side, like, trying to cut his ear off. Folks, he, that the word for sword in the Greek uh, denotes something that was, like, five feet long. It was like a clay. Whoa, whoa. And, uh, and um, you know, I'm, I could... I'm just going to spitball this. I could be completely wrong. But uh, he was trying to cut his damn head off. And, yeah. the, and the guy, nobody's like, I'll cut your ear off. 
I'm Nobody Zorro. Like that. No, it's that'll like, stop this whole army no, of coming like, in I'm here. It's like I'm gonna take your head off. That's my buddy Jesus over there. I don't understand why he's gonna, you know, go to the cross and stuff. I think it's nonsense. I'm gonna try to decapitate you. Yeah. The guy ducked it. Boom. Off with the ear. Another awesome thing here from the from the article on the Vikings is that hard climates make hard men. We have a whole generation that does everything it can do to stay away from anything that's going to, like if their life was represented, if they went to the gym and that, that represented their life, they would literally walk in and go, oh man, did you see that? That heavy weight almost touched me. Like that's how they do their life. Do you know, Anything got, that will make them bigger, stronger, right. powerful, better. They avoid all of those things well, you know, so they can stay weak. And in, in, uh, in my bestseller, uh, Pussification, which I hate to mention, uh, <laughs> Uh, there's, there's this, uh, we report on it. In, Pussification, in the, book. the effeminization of the American male. Available on Amazon.com. Uh, <laughs> we've got this, uh, we've got this story where, um, Planet Fitness, I believe it was, uh, not all of them, but I believe it was, um, one Planet Fitness removed the squat rack because it was intimidating to the pussies that were coming to lift weights. I, I, I can't, Unbelievable. can't comment. I, I think they should have left it if they're going to squat. So, so with with uh, with cops to protect us, with uh, our military to protect us, um, here's one thing I want to try to get across uh, to to the young to the young whippersnappers listening to us on Wars and Wild Men podcast. Uh, thank God for them. You know, cops. Uh, their their normal response time to come protect you is like 22 minutes. My response time, on the other hand, with my any one of my weapons is usually thousand feet per second. You know. <laughs> That's pretty fast. Yeah. So here's, here's the thing I'm trying to get across. Dude, if you're going to be a man, you're the front line of defense. That's right. You're there first to jack whomever up. You're the first responder. Yeah. Uh, you're the security system, right? You're the Your stand- kids should look to you when it goes down. You're the standing army. You're the cop on duty. We had this uh, story uh, the other day on Clash Daily where this armed robber breaks into this house in Florida Every person in the family shot the son of a bitch. I saw that. <laughs> that's awesome. That's a perfect family. That's that's uh, that's that Michael Landon stuff. That's little house. Yeah. That's you know that's a Doug Dreamland. I have a good quote for you. Give it to it's me. From a song. It's actually some song lyrics. It's from a song called "Grow a Pair," and it says, "We've been beaten down, feminized by the culture crowd. No more nice guy, timid and ashamed. Grab a sword." Don't be scared. Be a man. Grow a pair. That's a song. Uh, well, I'm, I picked up a quote somewhere. I'm just assuming. I don't. Dang man. If I sang it, you, it wouldn't sound like a song. Yeah. It's more like a poem that I Get angrily the coyotes coming in recited from into south the, of Clarksville. Where are we? I don't know. <laughs> in Phoenix. So my buddies, it's your job to protect everyone and everywhere, uh, everyone everywhere, and at all times. And you know what? You should send out. You should send out a vibe that says, "God help." the dumbass who transgresses or tra- or trespasses on that which I love and that's under my care. That's right. That's what a man does. That's how a man rolls. And if you don't, come to speed, man. There's great uh, uh, gun courses. I guarantee if you looked hard, you'd find some uh, probably world-famous fighters yep. within a 30-mile drive. Definitely. You know, And uh, lots of stuff you can learn on, on YouTube if you're out in the country. Man, make full use of uh, of that ability to shoot weapons where you're at, yep. and uh, become proficient, become a protector, and don't be a victim, man. Absolutely and, and, and not. And the, and the first thing is, even before you try to develop some type of physical um, skill, you need to get an attitude that it is your responsibility. You need to take responsibility, and and God's put you in, put you over a family or with a family, and you're the one that's responsible to do your best to take care of them. And Martin Luther King Jr. said this. The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at a time at times of challenge and controversy. That's when men step up. Boys, run away. Men, step up. We toe the line. And uh, if you want to, if you want to come to speed real quick, toughen up a little bit. Uh, like you said yesterday, go out and get punched in the face. Uh, number two, learn how to fight uh, stat as soon as possible, and uh, make cer- make certain you find the best of the best to train you. Right. Go to an MMA gym. Do not quit until you become a force of nature and then continue on. Uh, learn how to use weapons, talking guns, knives, baseball bats. Don't just shots, buy them. Whatever. Learn how to use them. Know how to master the protective tools. 
and get a stinking arsenal of them and have them by you at all times because you know what? You never know. And then grow a pair. And, uh, oh, and here's another one. Number four, keep your head on a swivel. That's it. I've got one more, Rich. I thought I was finished. You've got to be alert at all times, constantly aware of surroundings, and have uh, General James Mattis's motto tattooed on your psyche. Yes. Namely, look cool and have a plan to kill every guy in the room. That's always a good motto. It's a good plan. <laughs> all right, guys. Adios. See you next week. Adios.